Hello again, and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is BGFH, and we are back for part two of this accessible iOS game, Heathcote, uh, which apparently is this asylum that we are in. Uh, we are kind of playing, I'm not, you know, it sounds like we're kind of playing from the perspective of the guy on the phone, but then it kind of switches when we get into the asylum. It's almost like we're playing from the guy that's walking through. They're doing this sort of ghost hunter radio show thing and like i said i've never actually watched any of those sort of ghosty shows on tv because you know they just seem really to me they just seem really like cheesy um it might be kind of amusing just to see once but uh so i mean but this is kind of other than it being in radio form you know this kind of seems like what it might be like um, so we are in this cell looking through this journal of one of the inmates, presumably, here before some fire that happened on Christmas Eve. What was it, 19... I think, was it 54? Something like that? So let's find out what our options are. We're currently standing in this cell. Journal. We've, begin, we, we've been given this warning of, get out, this horror can take form. And Journal. who knows what will happen. So... Where are you? Cell phone. Head back. We'll head back. Okay. Heading back. Okay, now we're back out in the hallway. The cells. You should be seeing three main entryways soon. Oh. Uh, cells, offices, plus whatever remains of the east wing. That's where you want to be if you can get to it. I hear ya. Okay. Okay. Back in the foyer. All right. So the only place we haven't gone, we've gone through the offices. There wasn't much in there except for a painting where I was kind of thinking, oh, maybe there's something behind it, but uh, there apparently wasn't. So let's swipe up. Where are you? East wing. East wing, definitely. That's the only place we haven't been yet, uh, except for in the main main part of the East asylum. West. There was a another passage we could have chose that went to the basement and the kitchen. So let's just finish Wait. off this quadrant of the the building. Damn, I really wish you can get to the East Wing. Sorry, did I miss something? I can get there just fine. I thought you said the entrance was blocked with vines and crap. What? Didn't you just say? I said that painting had crap growing over the East Wing entry. Not the real thing. Um... I was headed there now. We all good? Yeah. Okay, that's weird. Okay, guess we get another decision. Start recording. Where are you? Cell phone. Start recording. Sure, start recording. Okay, ready? Yep. Start anytime. I am now walking towards the infamous East Wing. The fire burned this area of the asylum pretty bad. Most of the roof has collapsed inward. As you can hear, it's still raining outside. Raining inside this room, too. I can smell... smoke. Oh, no. What? <clears throat> it's the freaking flashlight. I charged the phone, but I forgot the goddamn batteries in the flashlight. Okay, so uh, it might be an expense of the the phone, but maybe I can use the flash on the uh, phone. That's what I would instinctively do at this point. Smoke? Flashlight. Cell phone. Where are you? Smoke? Let's do smoke first. Smoke? Isn't it soaking wet in there? Yeah, but I swear I smell smoke. Strong, too, man. Like I'm standing next to a campfire. There are burnt wood beams lining the whole area. I think they're from when the roof collapsed. You can see where the beams were moved to get the bodies out. Great. There's a large clearing in the middle of the room. It looks like the people must have been in one place. Okay. Flashlight. Yeah, let's, what's this business with the flashlight? Haunted House 101, man. Always make sure... Flashlight has batteries. It's okay. I mean, it'll certainly make for a more exciting show. I'm going through to the side of the 
well, now we suspect, murders. The moon is bright. Should be okay. This might be one of those things we wait on until you can go back with someone else. It's dangerous for you to mess around in the dark. Scary as hell, too. Huh. Don't worry about it, Martin. I've got enough moonlight to see around. Plus, this room is freaking gold. The roof is totally collapsed in here. The whole room is open to the elements. The rain is stopping. What? I can only guess that this place... David. What? It's still raining. What are you talking about? I can hear it. Oh. Yeah. I... Huh. <laughs> okay, so we've had a couple of weird things going on. He's talking about the vines, and then there's some weird discrepancy with the weather. Go back. Where are you? Cell phone. Keep going. Oh, what the hell? Let's keep going. We're this Anything far in. Anything else around there? Probably there's regret this choice. The wing. I'm going to check in there. Any light there? David? David. It looks like a records room. Lots of filing cabinets. Well, that's not good. What? The door slammed shut. It's pitch black. Uh, open to any ideas. Jeez, oh, uh, can you feel your way out? Use this your cell phone. This isn't exactly the kind of place I want to be sticking my hands where I can't see them. Uh, Use your cell phone's camera flash, dude. Flashlight. Where are you? Flashlight. The batteries are completely out? They're toast, man. Pitch freaking black in here. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Where are you? Cell phone. David, does your phone have a light? See? Uh, yes, of course. Good idea. Hold on. See, I know what's going on here. David? David. Hold on. Need to find... Where is it? David. Uh, hang on. God damn it. Okay, he's walking around still. And he's giving us a choice. David. David? David. Uh. David? David. David? <laughs> See, I have different... What are you doing? Jeez. Answer me, dude. Uh, hang on. I'm looking for Joe Banks' file. Here it is. The files seem water damaged, but they look okay. The Dr. Fausto Koffer? Seems he was in charge of Joe. Hey, hold on. Fausto Koffer. I'm on it. Anything else? Some handwritten note. A bunch of medical stuff. I'm just reading. Okay, so now I'll probably have a choice for the records. Dr. Koffer. Handwritten note. Doesn't say who wrote it. It just says, You don't answer me. Maybe you can't hear me. Maybe you can't hear at all. But maybe you can, can read, read these, these words. words. I've been trying to set you free. Don't you understand that? We thought the ritual would win the war. But we were wrong. You didn't bring victory with you. She only brought your hunger. I'm sorry we walk you. I have been doing all that I can to appease you. We have given you tribute, tribute after, after tribute, tribute to, to feed on. on. Isn't that what you wanted? Okay. The hell is some kind of weird sacrifice thing? Is that what's going on here? That's remember there was that that shrine in that that room ba a ways back in the offices. Doctor Coffer. Hold on. Okay, I got some info here. Want me to read it to you? Yeah, man. Not got much, but Fausto Coffer came to America in 1949. Jesus. He was part of Operation Paperclip. Huh? 
uh, other than that, uh, all it says is that he was born on March 16, 1911. Anything about his speciality? Nope. Oh, well. We can look into it more when you get back. What else does the file say? Suffering audio and visual hallucinations. Despite many adjustments to his medications, he still suffers symptoms. Patients believe the ghost of former patients are here telling him about a demon who he is in mortal danger from. A curious aspect is the fact that one of the voices he hears is not human. He hears what he believes are calls from an animal, a chimpanzee to be specific. When questioned about it, he described it as a formless electrical entity made of blue light. He says it screams to him when he is in danger. Patient recommended for scourging for the December Tribute. That's dark. December Tribute. Okay, yeah, because that other handwritten note. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but... Operation Paperclip. Yeah, what is that? Operation Paperclip? After World War II, uh, the government brought a bunch of German scientists and doctors over to America. They granted them amnesty if they agreed to work for the U.S. government. Uh, it says here they brought Koffer over in 1949. Wait. He was a Nazi? Uh, not sure, but probably. Hell, man. If he was a Nazi, that'd certainly make for some interesting cutaways during the show. Uh-huh. Operation Paperclip. Dr. Koffer. Handwritten note. Head back. Cell phone. Operation Paperclip. Cell phone. Head back. Well, we'll try to head back. Got it. Heading back to the clearing. Sounds like someone was sacrificing... A... What the fuck? Oh. David? That can't David. be good. You hear me? No oh, monkey. Chimp. Jesus! What the hell was that? No, it... Whoa! David! Martin! What the hell's going on? Where the hell did that come from? What? What do you mean, what? What did you see? See? You didn't hear that? Certainly did. Okay. Hear what? Oh. What's going on? Hear what? Okay, so he didn't hear it. What's going on? Uh. What? What the hell is going on over there? Can you hear me? Why can I smell burning hair? What? I smell burning hair. What is going on? Oh no. No, 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 Judith. Poor Judith. Who's Judith? I shouldn't have done this. David! No good can come from it. Is someone else with you? Her eyes. David. The fire took her eyes. David. She's still looking at me. She is seeing me. Seeing what? She tries to speak. What are you talking but, about? But the fire is stealing her breath. Is someone else with you? I can make her a eyes. choice. David. The fire took her eyes. David. She's still looking at me. Burning hair? You kidding? Burning hair? You have to listen. <laughs> the fire's eating away at them. Their skin is bubbling. They're trying to scream, but there's no one around. Their tongues are turning to ash. Their lips are melting off. It's like they're smiling. Please, forgive me. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. The demon had to die. Had to go. We all had to sacrifice ourselves. I have to join you too. Oh, please. Lady. Please just stop staring. I didn't want to hurt any of you. Especially you. Especially you. Uh... Hurt you? Listen. 
Listen to me. Um, hmm. So do we want to try to get him back on track? Or do we want to kind of play through this weird imaginary scenario? Well, let's, uh... Let's just get back. David! Shh. Shh. Why don't you just close your eyes? Here. I'll help you. <laughs> oh, shh, shh. Go to sleep. Please. Just, just go to sleep. Hey, is that it? Oh. Okay, we're gonna answer again. Landline. Hello? Why the hell didn't you call back? What? David? What's going on? What? Why'd you call my landline? I dropped the phone, tried to call you back, and got your voicemail. I... I... Uh... What's that? What? Okay. So Martin. now my cell's ringing. Cell phone. Hello? <laughs> you think you can escape? Oh, God. Martin? What the hell? Where are you? Um... <laughs> That's such a cheesy laugh. Landline. 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 Okay, the only thing I can do is landline. I, I'm... I'm sorry, I... Look. Be honest with me right now. Are you messing with me? What? What's going on, man? I... I... Uh, Martin? I... I'm going back into the East Wing, okay? This is all hard enough as it is. I can't do it with you freaking out. What the... No! How... How? This isn't possible. Sounds like fire. David, please leave. The East Wing, it's on fire. Uh-huh. There's, there's people here. David, leave now. Okay, so we got another choice. Who's there? What's happening? Who's there? What's happening? Let's see what's happening. David, talk to me. What is it? I, I saw them. They came after me, man. They came after me. Tell me you're out of there. I, I couldn't. They were in front of the exit. I think one followed me. Okay, where is he? Building plans. Building plans. Wait, I got the building plans here. Hold on. Okay, calm down. Calm down. There should be a window on that floor, okay? See if you can get out from there. The windows are all boarded up. Uh, uh, look for a fire escape on the second floor. Find the stairs. They're rickety as hell. Okay, okay, um... Is there any other way out that you can see? Damn. No. Okay. I'm going up. Sounds like a zombie. <laughs> David! <laughs> David! And I think he's dead. David! Call for help. What's happening? Call for help. Uh, call for help, I guess. David! I'm freaking out here! Please! Talk to me! God, please be okay. I'm gonna have to call the cops! David! 
Alright, there's that laughing guy again. Talk to me, buddy. It's okay. He's out now. It's done. Jesus, David, what are you talking about? What what happened? Please, tell me you're okay. The doctor took my fear. But it's not him. It's something else inside of him. It's all at once to escape. And it went to the only other fear it could find. Yours. David. Thank you. Thank you for being afraid. It can now spread. It will take the pain away. It will bleed your fear dry. You will become one with it. Like me. But it is for a bigger cause. He has a plan. Now don't be afraid of them. What? They just want somewhere warm to live. No, 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 no! <laughs> Alrighty then. Coming in December to 108.2 Eagle FM, the tragedy that befell David Scott at the Heathcote Asylum. While recording a ghost hunting special for this very radio station, David Scott and his partner Martin Fellows encountered true evil. With actual recordings of the horrifying event, David Scott will give his first interview since his recovery. I thought I knew what fear was before I went in there. But the demon I encountered reached out and took the life of my best friend. A demon that ate his fear and took his soul. Join us, if you dare. But whatever you do, don't get scared. It wants your fear. <laughs> it wants to feed. Only on 108.2 Eagle FM. Swipe down to return. The weather in just a moment. Okay. Every Tuesday night. Entertainment news. And there you go. That is apparently the end of the game. And now we're getting. Are on screen. Yeah, credits are on the screen, so with voiceover... I think I have voiceover on, don't I? Oh, yeah I did. Um... Hmm. Trying to figure out how, oops, trying to figure out how to get through the credits. Oh, okay, what I do here? Uh, sure, I'll look at that in a little bit. Um. <clears throat> Okay, whatever, just... Um... So, that was the game. Um, I don't know, it was... It was interesting, I mean, there wasn't really a whole lot. I mean, there wasn't a lot of substance to it, but, you know, the, at the atmosphere was decent. Um... You know, I could kind of tell what they were going for. Interestingly, like I said, in the first video, there was that initial choice where we could go into the other side, not the east wing, but we could go into where the kitchen and the basement was. And I'm wondering if that is a whole other situation, or if um, you don't really get to do much there and you have to double back. To the east wing so i think we're going to stop this video here and for thoroughness sake 
we're probably not going to play through the whole game again unless it ends on the other side. Um, but we're going to see, we're going to start from the beginning, and I just want to see what this other uh, choice is. Now, I could leave that for you guys to discover, um, but I'm curious about what it is, and so, like I said, for a thoroughness sake, let's check it out. So, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, initial playthrough, and uh, follow me on Twitter at BGFH79. And I will come back one more time to see the part of the asylum that we apparently missed from the beginning. So, see you guys in the next video.